Bill Oddie, you've been out on a tour on Aberson Reservoir, and what have you made of it? I, I, I can't be, be more accurate than that. I've not been on the reservoir, <laughs> or in the reservoir. I've been around the reservoir. Um, it's weird, I tell you. Just two seconds. There's a guy like singing in the back. You're probably not picking this one up, but, you know, we don't hear them in the middle of London very much, I'm afraid. Um, I, I feel actually quite a connection with Aberton, as a matter of fact, because um, I've been several times over the years, most notably, I suppose, in 1990, um, I opened the then new information centre, as it were, a visitor centre. And that was the first time we really had one, I think, properly. Um, it was the beginning of the whole process of making a place like this available to visitors, the public, bird watchers and so on and so forth, and also publicising the good work that's being done. And so, 25 years later, wah, 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 it's not a flashback, it's a flash forward. Um, here we are, the new improved version. And I might say the new improved version of Aberton, because it is now tantamount to a small, green, safe country. <laughs> it's so flipping big. Because uh, I remember when I first came here, I thought well, it was a big reservoir. But it, it had a pattern, which a lot of reservoirs have. been a big area, a road across one end, and a sort of narrow bit down the far end, which was always a bit muddier and, and uh, reedier and was good for birds. And I've been trying in vain today. We've just been on a tour. Um, into some privileged areas, I might say, in our four-wheel drive, with the um, the Essex and Suffolk Water logo emblazoned on the four-wheel drive, and. Um, I couldn't really recognise any of it at all. I think it was this the bit I went to. Was that the bit I went to? And it's a testimony, frank and quite seriously, the immense amount of work um, that has been done over the past 10, 20 years or something like that. And also a huge testimony to the people involved, you know. So that's the Wildlife Trust, Essex Wildlife Trust, the um, Suffolk Water, Essex and Suffolk Water. Which do you prefer? <laughs> no, that's, that's great. I mean, you know, in terms of that, it's actually quite important, isn't it, to uh, to, to to make sure that construction projects like this go hand in hand yeah. with environmental concerns, yeah. isn't it? it? I mean, one of, one of the great things, you know, that there is, and it's important to realise this, because very often you get a sort of blanket horror at the idea of something being disturbed or construction work or something like that. But the honest truth is that within that process, there will be several stages that actually the world wildlife quite like, you know. I'm thinking, for example, if you dig out an area, um, and leave, and it, it becomes sort of pebbly and rocky, and you know, it has little pools in it, and it didn't have that before. Now, for a while, you get little wing plover moving in, and lap wings, and various other things. Uh, I remember going to another of the big reservoirs at um, Grafham Water, and they'd uh, turned over some bat, some old banking area they wanted to eventually you know, sort of uh, um, redesign to a certain extent and the next year is full of orchids and those orchids have been lying dormant underneath there you know there's all sorts of complicated and interesting processes and the great thing is to have experts talking to other experts in each of those areas so they're complementing one another. And that's exactly what we're doing here. There's, this is the best possible example of that cooperation. You know. So, have you seen something that you particularly liked, a particular bird or something <laughs> like that? It's not a particular bird. I've just had envy. I've had place envy going on today because when we were taking, we'd just been talking to a young lady who's been working on. Um, a survey here to make sure what's here and she'd been sort of given a section which the public are not allowed in at this point anyway and it, on the face of it it's just like so many other little watery areas bits of, of uh, reed beds bits of bushes and some wet patches etc etc but in the process over the past year or two she discovered that it was the home to vast numbers of water voles not just one or two, but a heck of a lot. And as it was being dug out, things like otters moved in as well, and so on and so forth, you know. And I, I have got... I love that. That's like having your own private natural playground. Nothing nicer. <laughs>